Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Nzinga, the warrior queen. During the 1400s, European countries began taking parts of Africa to enrich themselves. They took its gold, ivory, and slaves. Portugal established itself in Angola, which is in southwestern Africa. Queen Nzinga, the queen of Nodongo, nowadays Angola, fought the Portuguese colonists her entire life. Nzinga is best known for her diplomacy. Once, she met with the Portuguese colonial governor at his palace. The governor arranged chairs only for himself and his people and offered Nzinga a rug to sit. Nzinga signaled a servant to kneel down, hands on the floor to serve as her stool. This way, the queen and the governor could see eye to eye as equals. Nzinga's half-brother, Mobandi, was the king of Nodongo. He was a real piece of trash. He sold his own people into slavery to the Portuguese. Nzinga was very upset about this and warned him to not do that again. However, he went against her and did it again. So she had to take the drastic measures of having him murdered to save her people and became the queen of Nodongo. The Portuguese broke all the promises they had with Nzinga and started to enslave her people. In turn, she declared war on the Portuguese. Nzinga formed an alliance with the Jaga, a people known for their warlike abilities. She encouraged all escaped slaves of any tribe to join her and launched their first attack against the Portuguese around 1630. Sadly, it was a losing battle. At age 60, she continued to fight for her people, but the Portuguese had better weapons and more troops. Nzinga died in Nodongo's rocky highlands at age 82. Her homeland remained under Portuguese control until 1975, when Angola finally won its independence. Today, the Angolan people still celebrate the memory of Nzinga, the warrior queen. Thank you for watching and listening to the story of Queen Nzinga. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe, follow, and share. It would help a ton. Thank you. Bye.